Welcome to the most detailed channel on YouTube, this time attempting to build a luxury modern house out of this 3D diamond. Somehow, consider subscribing if you haven't yet, grab your cups of tea, and let's get building. A house that's shaped like a diamond. Well, it's a pretty simple idea on the surface. In reality, what it means is lots and lots and lots of planning. Starting with the diamond itself as the centerpiece, we build up a template upon which we build a series of bestagons, connecting them together at the corners to create what would be that stereotypical diamond shape you'd expect to see when getting ripped off by your local jewelers. And then after thickening up the line work, we actually take a copy of the whole thing using the little tiles recipe. And we're basically just going to flip this over, place it back down on the underneath, and, uh, and now we have the underside already half done. From here, we can simply connect up the corners with the central point on the ground, creating that full diamond shape we wanted, as well as the laying template for the rest of the house. Next up, adding in the top floor layer. And here I'm actually using the polygon tool, which has got to be one of my favorite additions to this mod. If you haven't used it yet, definitely check it out. We then come down a little further to rearrange the supports which sit underneath the crown of the diamond. Obviously, I didn't want to take away from the diamond shape too much, that being the point of this build, but the transition between diamond and house, well, clearly needs to follow some logic. So, using the curve tool, we line out the walls in large triangular panel sections, integrating the supports into the much thicker black border at the bottom, while leaving the crown of the diamond untouched. Now just finishing off the rest of the main supports, and as you can see I'm adapting the template as we go here, using that light blue wall for our measurements whilst changing up the stone blocks to act as a simple guide for the floor, just so we get a good sense of where everything is gonna be. So with our frame completed we can finally start bringing a bit more substance to the build by laying down some of that majestic white concrete. I also add in a centre shaft for the elevator, that'll be how you'll get up to the diamond room and of course keeping the theme throughout with those inverse slanted cutouts in the walls on either end. I definitely didn't want to just go for something flat and square, because yeah, it, it would not have suited. Now I add in an extra ring of support for the crown of our diamond just so it doesn't look like it's floating, and filling in the rest of the gaps, and of course the crown itself, with a slightly tinted blue glass. And I find it really helps to add that reflective effect that you should get from glass, especially when being outside like this. And while that's not quite all the windows, firstly we're going to spruce up the diagonal supporting column on this side, since we had the bigger window on the roof here, we of course etch into the wood too, bringing out that extra layer of depth. Coming around, we then add layers in for the first floor on both sides, alongside a couple of the internal walls and finishing up the other slanted supports on the other side of the building. And here really I'm just polishing off what I've already done, just making sure everything's up to scratch before starting on the entranceway. Now here, I want to get the most out of the, the smaller space we have, so I decide to sink the dark stone brick floor down a block, giving plenty of headroom for the front doors, while also making sure the small space seems just a little bit bigger by introducing that extra vertical space, finishing it off with some thin white walls, keeping it nice and clean. We then come around to the back to do something similar. Obviously this time without all of the extra space, it's basically just a stairway from the ground level going straight down to the basement. No faff. We'll be checking all that stuff out in the tour. Now though, moving down to the ends of our build, firstly we actually start on the pool area. I mean, you can't have a house this fancy without a pool, and while this would probably, well, well, most definitely be classed as an outdoor pool, half of it's basically inside, so at least it's got plenty of protection. On the flip side, we close up the other end with another roof window, then again sinking down the ground floor a bit and even extending it out this time, we then finally bring everything together with this super large viewing window out the side. 
And finally, with all the awkward ones done, we can come around and add in all the traditional shaped windows. Now, I did actually think about changing these up, so, you know, they're all slanted in some way, but in all honesty, I actually think this looks better. Having the contrast between the squares and slants helps, but I think it's just more that level of realism that it adds. You know, since in reality, most windows are just going to be a standard size due to the wonders of mass production. Now, while we're almost done with the outside, there's a couple more details I'd like to add. Primarily, some colour in the form of flowers, so... Firstly, we build up a few triangular shaped planters. I give these two levels, which should help the flowers in the middle bush out a bit, giving the whole bed a bit more of a natural feel. And then we even combine two of the triangular ones together to make a big square one. Since it's by the main entrance, we, you know, we want the extra color to make that impact. Now, while these look cool and all, we actually need to build the flowers that go in them. So that's exactly what we did here building up six variants of flowers we then copy them over creating multiple colored versions of each of the six plants and then a few more for some grass and bushes too now once we have these we can literally just start plopping them into our flower beds do a few smaller ones just to jot around the outside filling in some gaps but obviously the main attraction here is the bigger beds and we don't hold back basically fitting in as many flowers as we can actually keeping to some sort of code starting with the yellows stuff like sunflowers and daffodils and moving through blues like delphinium bluebells and periwinkle okay and finally of course the deeper reds like poppies and roses and co seriously anyway pretty much doing the same thing around the front except this time with the two bigger beds on either side we drop the color coding completely and go for a more natural approach combining all the colors together we don't quite do this randomly though since naturally plants tend to grow in like bunches so we try to mimic that same behavior here too with like small random collections of plants rather than a completely even mix and i gotta say i'm actually super proud of how these turned out like the method was actually fairly simple and yeah i think the results speak for themselves um putting aside my vanity for one moment we need to be able to actually power this place without slowly killing everyone on earth so solar panels i made sure i'd left enough space in the design forum because you know building sustainably is important we are however just going to gloss over the fact that half this house is glass and it would probably be rather expensive to keep it at comfortable temperature all year round and then we also edited and finished off the gravel border around the whole building too which just really helps to cement the house into the environment now lastly we have the doors or more accurately the door frames we we still gotta build the doors and obviously we do just that if you want to know exactly how to animate doors like these, check out my tutorial, I'll leave a link for that down in the description. Now I'll be doing a tour of the internals in just a moment, but if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and don't forget all of my builds are always available to play through my Patreon for the price of a small coffee, so go check that out if you're interested. Now, with all the doors done, we simply have to go around and place them all in. So after many, many hours of work, we finally finished our beautiful diamond inspired Riverside dream home. And let's take a look around. Firstly, we're actually gonna start round the back since this acts as the entrance for the basement and then we'll work our way back up. 
So through the first doors we got a large entrance hall, plenty of space for storage down here but mainly it leads to the two rooms either side. Now on the right we actually have a cinema room and I didn't go too overboard with the details, it's just mainly to show what you could do with these rooms, almost like going to view a property. And back across the hall we have a little more storage than the door to the vault. But there's a vault, and as you can see, a heavily secured place to store all of those precious diamonds. Moving back up to the front entrance, obviously we added that grandiose feel by stepping it down a block. But as you'll see on the inside, it was actually a little awkward to build around this, with all the floors on different levels, but I, th I think we made it work. I will come back to the elevators in a moment. For now though, let's head straight into the living room. <laughs> Mushroom sofa, cause why not? Nothing too fancy in here, but I did use that wooden pattern thing we have on the outside and actually turned it into a shelf. And I think integrating outside details with internal ones like that really just helps to bring a level of continuity, which wouldn't exist by just covering it up with drywall. The doors leading out to the pool are actually a bit different, sliding outwards and then sideways. Now with the angle of the door, it's pretty much all I could do, short of having them maybe like sink into the floor perhaps. But I think this works and I also did a little toilet room by the pool too. Half of your friends are probably still going to pee in the pool anyway, but at least you can say you tried. Obviously giving the glass a more shattered effect for that necessary privacy. No. Back down on the other end, we got our kitchen. Nice and spacious with lots of light from these huge windows. And right down the end, keeping everything open plan, we actually have the dining area. Having the lower floor here really maximizes what space we do have. And with that giant viewing window out the back, just it just fills everything with so much light. And I really couldn't think of a better place I'd love to chow down on my chicken dinner. Well, may maybe in the diamond room, but firstly though, we gotta check out the bedrooms. Getting up to the first floor, we're actually gonna use this little elevator around the front. In an ideal world, I would've just combined everything into just one main elevator. Unfortunately, Little Tars doesn't really have an elevator option, so we just kind of had to improvise in this case. And in here we have the smaller of the two bedrooms. Still pretty big to be fair, but something I didn't wanna compromise on was the massive skylight. I mean, obviously, it comes down to preference, but being able to stare up at the stars while I slowly drift off to sleep is just such a, such a peaceful experience. And one we've definitely repeated in the other bedroom, moving back across now to the master bedroom. A little bit fancier with the red carpet leading up to this raised platform which houses the bed, and while it helps to raise up the bed, it also separates it off from the rest of the room quite nicely. So you could deck out this area with another office or reading space or whatever you wanted I suppose and it wouldn't make your sleeping area feel too cluttered because it's got that nice separation. And now for the final centerpiece of this build, the diamond crown. Round here we actually have the main elevator shaft that leads up. I've tried to make it feel legit with the fancy slide indoors, and I'm actually surprised these work so well considering the sheer lack of space that we actually had to build this in. So yeah, we can take our elevator all the way up to our main office room. Now, I've got this set up as an office since that's where I personally spend most of my working day. It makes sense to have the nice views alongside that feeling of being in a nice large open space. And of course, no office setup is properly complete without a mini fridge for some drinks and snacks too. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing and sharing this video. As always, the map is now available for download on my Patreon, alongside all the other maps I've built so far, so definitely check that out if you're interested, and I shall catch you all next time.